Hello. <sighs> uh, my son is sick, so yep, very little sleep. Oh, uh, get sleep. It was just interrupted six times. <laughs> Maths. I was. I don't know if that's a British thing or European thing to say, call them maths. Like plural for math. Like you'd learn maths instead of math. But I find it silly and humorous to say, so I choose to say maths now. Plus, quick maths are nice. Right, maths. Uh, <laughs> the uh, I was looking at the the pins for the da -da -da -da, the blah. Like I said, tired. Uh, but coffee having occurs. Blue fruit. <sighs> they ate a ate a fruit. Blue fruit thingy. I have figured that it can uh, do a do a, do a frighten. Um, oh boy. <laughs> Let's just start over. Hi, I'm Troy. I make keyboards, I guess. But the clicky clack time, not the the type clicky clack type, not the da da da, -da type. Although I do want to get my hands on one of Jack's planks and uh, with the speaker module. <sighs> right, so um, I did some real maths and figuring on, on what I can uh, retrofit versus what I can make and what, what, uh, what features are capable of being supported. So with Adafruit Bluefruit, if I want to make a companion board for that uh, without changing the matrix, because right now the matrix is uh, the matrix is uh, the the orientation of rows and columns that represent the keys. So right now my Signum series, uh, except for the 3.1, has a pretty standard matrix. Uh, the 40% is 12 columns by four rows. And my matrix is 12 by 4. Uh, <clears throat> so, no surprises there. However, that is technically less efficient. Uh, because if I were to do 7 and 7, I would only need 14 pins. Uh, but as 12 and 4, I need 16 pins. So, if I've got 16 pins, then sure, why not do 12 and 4 and keep it simple, stupid. Uh, but to change it to uh, 14 pins to free up two extra pins or to, to rather to lack two extra pins as in the blue fruit which is what I'm talking about seven columns and seven <laughs> rows is logically interesting to orient <laughs> not really fun to set up uh, so that might be it would be a completely different matrix and it would need to be processed differently. Um, so to do that, I would need fewer pins for that, which is ideal, because that's what I'm trying to squeeze out of this uh, blue fruit. But that also kills the backwards compatibility, so you won't be able to have an adapter board. Uh, so what can you have with the adapter board? So you can have if I recall correctly, it frees up, you can have Bluetooth, which obviously, why would you do it without Bluetooth? And you can have the LED uh, controllable, I believe. I think that was uh, minus I squared C is, yeah, well that's 15 and 14. 
Uh, no, what was I talking about? No, no, no. So for the, the daughter board, for something that would, uh, for the adapter board, for you to take your existing Signum and uh, put this board on top of it and then put an Adafruit Blue Fruit on top of it, uh, in order to do that, you would need, what did I say, 12, 16? Yeah, 16. So then you lose, yeah, you lose I squared C, but you gain the LED. So you would have the Blue Fruit module, you would have Bluetooth with it, and you would have a controllable LED on it. You would you would get no I squared C, but everything else would work. Uh, which I think is a pretty pretty fair deal, um, <clears throat> because you can. I mean, it's, it's uh, it works. You can stuff um, things. It works. I really didn't want to change the matrix because then that complicates versioning for like what firmware you have and what board you have and now you're matching matrix and layout and all that <clears throat> the more I think about it the more the 3.0 needs to be just kind of a standalone and then uh, we go elsewhere from there <clears throat> I have been thinking about a uh, the, the incredibly obvious uh, I've been talking about a Raspberry Pi, and I have a Signum 3 point something. So, like, apparently after a year of grinding on this, I'm like, Durr, Signum 3.14 Pi. It has a Raspberry Pi in it. Get it? Uh, ah. <laughs> <sighs> Either that or the Signum. See, I don't, at this point, like revisiting that, I don't even know what the Raspberry Pi would do at this point. Besides, you know, be a computer. Um, you know, just that. <laughs> Besides being a computing device. The potential... Well, Signum 3.0... See, that's the thing, is I, I, I built features into the Signum 3.0 so that it supports lots of stuff. Um, but to add the Bluetooth support, I have to change the matrix. And to change the matrix, I have to make it no longer backwards compatible um, with the other Signum 3.0s. So, this follows that there should be a Signum 3.0 you know, 3.7 or something like that. Something with Bluetooth or Signum B or something. I don't, I don't know. Um, something that would have the same layout and everything, but be Bluetooth. And by the way, while I'm doing all this, I'm still, in the back of my mind, I'm still trying to figure out how to do some, some tilting, some adjusting the orientation, adjusting the angle, uh, or doing full splits because if I'm going to have I squared C on there, why shouldn't I? Uh, I'm already trying to figure out how to design something that can use um, cheaper controllers and just be a slave board that reports by some standard back to I, I squared C, uh, master, via I squared C to the master board so that it just, you know, if you want to make it a split, just plug in like an extension to it. Um, and one of my thoughts on that is just to even just for my own development purposes so maybe this is yeah you know what maybe this is a, a very limited run um a prototype board <sighs> right um like a limited run prototype board that has uh header pins on it on the left and the right side so you can just take the uh, take the one piece design and just cut it right in half <clears throat> and then header pin onto those uh, header pins <laughs> um, it will certainly help a bit with the with working on these things and then you can kind of 
I mean, if you've got header pin access to each of those points, it becomes relatively trivial to start playing around with splits and, you know, something that has a base but has an adjustable angle on it. Um, yeah, yeah. See, but I feel like I could just hack that together. I mean, like, glue header pins to, to it, and then wire all the header pins. Yeah. Yeah, you can do that pretty easily. There'll be wire sitting on top of it, but, you know, whatever. Just for testing. And you can just cut that board right down the middle. And now you have adjustable angles. <laughs> <clears throat> And I can swap out microcontrollers and do lots of stuff with it. But then the, I come back to what is the base for the board. <sighs> if I'm frank, I feel less inspired to to poke away at this stuff primarily because of that shift in uh, <clears throat> shift in values I had uh, a couple of vlogs ago but uh, also just you know trying not to work on this stuff at home not that that gives me much time elsewhere to, <laughs> to work on it um, You know, some ideas shine, and I record them, and usually come back to them, and apply them later, but, I don't know, everything's, this is, this is another one of those, those cycles, I'm in the, the chill cycle, and I'm not sure if I should be. I'm also still kind of bummed about the the boards, the cost of the boards. I don't like <laughs> I don't like raising the prices. Well, there's still some left, anyways. <clears throat> a bit too down today. This morning probably wasn't helpful or is, is actively contributing to this mood, which means I need more coffee. Whew. <clears throat> cool thing about getting I squared C in there is if I can get the I squared C in there I can I can add other features I can I can add the OLED you know no problem except for some processing cost and uh, add the split you know the remote boards the slave boards easily it's I mean it's kind of a universal connection so you can do lots of stuff with it <clears throat> It's just like the first to go in order for me to add Bluetooth. <laughs> uh, plus, I know I said before that I could do a 40% with the Bluetooth and the I squared C on that Adafruit Blue Feather, but in doing so, I'm required to do. Um, no, I could do a 5 by 10 matrix, which is. A little wonky but doable. Uh, the 5x10 is what I did on the um, 
No, it's not a 5x10. Yeah, it is a 5x10. Wait a minute. That's not right. No, that is right. Yeah, that's right. It was a 5 by um it was a 5 by 12 on the 3.1. That's not right either. That's right. It was a 6 by 10. So the 3.1 was a 6.10. <coughs> it was a 6 by 10, which was a little funky to do the matrix, but still still pretty doable um, the difficulty I mean to tweak that I can do a 5 by 10 uh, on the 4 on the 40% and keep Bluetooth and keep I squared C uh, but I lose the LED so you know that'll just be half on the whole time <clears throat> but whatevs you know all of this seems like a lot of trouble to go through for something that I consider as minor as Bluetooth, but I don't know. Maybe once I add it, I'll just be like, wow, this is ten times better than I thought it would be, because testing stuff is just what I do, not even necessarily deciding what works well or doesn't work well. Just trying stuff out is more more valuable than imagining what would be valuable and uh, it's gonna be a long day <laughs> here we go